Good evening from Blades Music. I have talked about this topic a few times in other videos back to October of 2020 and my most recent one about Studio One 5.2, talking about the Faderport 8 and how to get the views on the Faderport 8 to look like you want them to look and to mimic the screen using macros and keyboard shortcuts. Tonight, I'm going into the details of how to create that exact same workflow that I use here, coming up next. All right, so I've done a couple of different videos that included this, um, but I want to go into the specifics of how to set it up. If you look at my other videos of the um, track and channel filtering from October of 2020, or my recent Studio One 5.2 update video, I cover bits and pieces of this. But I'm going to go into the full setup. I'm going to try and do this fast so that it's not overly complicated. So here we go. Step one is you want to name all of your channels and tracks appropriately so that this uh, track channel and filtering, uh, track and channel filtering actually works the way you want it to. So you can see here on the screen, I've got all of my vocals labeled with a V colon at the beginning, my drums with a D colon at the beginning, guitars with a G, keys with a K. I have them this way so that when you go into the filters over here, when you type one of those, you will be limited to just that. So if I do V colon here on my tracks, you can see I only see the tracks for those that start with the V colon. I'm going to hide that. And over here on the channels, same idea. If I go in here to V colon, we're just going to get the vocals on those channels. Now, you'll also may have noticed I just had colon in there before, same thing over here on the tracks, and that is because every one of my tracks has a colon in the name, so that's going to automatically make those all show up. So, that's step one. Make sure you name your tracks in a consistent manner. Whether you use D and V and G or whatever, if you use a dash instead of a colon, Whatever works for you, make sure that you set them up so that you can filter them in the groups that you want to be able to filter them by. Step two is we have to create the macros. So to create the macros, you're going to go into your macro toolbar here, and then you're going to go to the gear or macro organizer, and you're going to create a couple of new macros. Now, in my case, I've already created these, and I've also created a group called filters in that process. So we're going to use the vocal as the example here, and we're going to edit that. And you can see what's in here is edit filter tracks to V colon, just like what we did in our example a minute ago, and then filter the channels also to V colon. This is going to make the tracks and the channels have the exact same set of tracks and channels between them. Now, I know you're probably asking, well, why not use the feature that automatically makes those two tie to each other. So we're going to go over that here momentarily. Um, so once you have your macros set and you'll set those for each of the different groups that you want, um, go ahead and OK out of that. And then um, you were going to set up some keyboard shortcuts to go with those as well. But let's stop there for a moment and talk about that link visibility of track list and console and why I don't have it set this way. So when you have that link set, of course, when you change one, it changes in the other as well. It keeps those two in sync, but here's the problem. There are things that display on the channel view or in the mix view that don't show in tracks, like buses, um, and there are things in the track view that don't show in the channels or in the mix view, like MIDI tracks. And so what happens is if you say, will limit my tracks down to D colon and this MIDI track here and this MIDI track here would be showing. And then I also say then show just my channels with the D colon in front of them, but MIDI channels won't be there. And then mimic that view back to the tracks. It immediately eliminates those from the track view and you can't ever get them back without going in and manually selecting to view them again. So same thing in reverse, 
boom, if you thought about that and you go, oh, well, I'll just turn it around, do it the other direction, you have the same problem with buses. Now, I have my folders attached to buses as well. Um, now, I've recently made a minor modification, so this may or may not be quite as important. You might be able to flip the order of the track to channels or channels to tracks in that macro, but I know that it works the way that I've got it right now, so I'm leaving well enough alone. And so you want to make sure that link visibility of track list and console is not turned on. And so you'll notice if I do go in here and I have that exception and I say, well, I don't really want to see these channels, my track view does not change. Likewise, if I say I don't want to see these uh, tracks over here, then my channel view doesn't change. So one way or the other, however your usage happens to work, just make sure you're comfortable with that. If it's really important for you to have those two linked to each other all the time, my method might not work for you. I have it turned off because my macros are automatically making the same view in both places. So now let's move on to the keyboard shortcuts that go with those macros. One of the awesome things about Studio One is that you can use keyboard shortcuts to fire off macros. So here you see in my keyboard shortcuts window, I've done a search for filter and you can see my vocal is firing off the macro filter channels to vocals. And that is control alt numpad two. Now I don't really want to use control alt numpad two on a regular basis because I'm not going to remember that it doesn't stick with me. So here's what I've done. I have a gaming keyboard and this gaming keyboard is a Logitech G910. You could get whatever macro keyboard you want. In this case, the keys down the left hand side on this keyboard, I have them mapped to the same as what's in my keyboard shortcuts here in Studio One. So I'm going to show you that now. In the, in the Logitech gaming software, so you can see here that I've got my keyboard shortcuts here. So let's look at the vocals is control alt numpad two. You can see I have my keys set up on the side of my keyboard over here. And for vocals, if I go into the edit command, you can see that's control alt numpad two as well. So this key maps to that keyboard shortcut, which maps to that macro. One step further than that, in here, I have the option to enable per profile backlighting, and you can see I have Studio One set for that. And so I have all my keys set to amber over there. That's maybe a throwback to the tungsten view from uh, Cakewalk Sonar. Um, it's also different from all of my other views. So ordinarily, these keys would all be blue or green. By turning them that kind of amber orange color, it dims it down a little bit, lets me know I'm in Studio One. It also makes these side keys really pop out in the colors that they're supposed to be. So you can see those keys on the side. I've got them colored with the yellow for all, kind of arbitrary. But the other ones I have matched to the colors in Studio One. So you see green for vocals is the same as my vocal channels down here. Blue for drums, that's here. The purple over here for my guitars and the pinkish color for my keyboards that are there at the end. So all these colors on my keyboard match the colors that go with my channels. So when all of this comes together, what we have is I can easily select between these different things and switch between the channels and tracks that are showing on my screen. Now, how does this incorporate into the fader port? Actually really simply, because now it's a default view. It used to be that you had to set up a couple of special things in uh, the fader port, one of which was you had to go into shift all mode. Now you just need to be in all mode here on the fader port. And you also previously had to make sure that your remote bank was turned on. No longer do you have to do that since uh, Studio One 5.2. So these things will naturally just follow each other from Studio One's tracks to the channels, 
to the fader port, to the keyboard and the keyboard shortcuts and the macros, they all work together. So the end result is this, this key shows me all of my tracks. Now I can use my banks and channels and whatnot on the fader port itself to get to those different places. If I come down here to my vocals, you will see now on the screen, I have just the vocal tracks, just the vocal channels and the vocal bus. And over here, I have the three vocal channels and the vocal bus automatically showing up here. Drums, all of my drums across here match what I have on the screen for channels and tracks. And now same thing with guitar, same thing with my keyboards. And as you see, I can switch easily between any of those views. And now I'm back to the all view of all of my tracks, all my channels, everything is here on the fader port and it's all a key press away. This makes the process of going through this really fast, really simple, and it gets extremely ergonomic uh, to be able to shift around this way in these different modes. I hope that you found this video useful, that you will maybe incorporate some of this, if not all of it, into your own workflows. If you found this useful, please like my video, subscribe to the channel, share the video with other people, Thanks for watching. Any comments you've got, I sure would like to hear them down below. Have a great evening.